Hey, what's up gang? Chad Allen here and welcome to Firechild Videos Newton's Cradle Tutorial Part 2. I should really call this one and a half because we're done with the physics, we're done with setting everything up, now it's just a matter of adding some materials, some lighting, and hitting the render button. So this one's going to be short and sweet. I'm ready to put this tutorial series behind me and move on to bigger and better things. So I'm done wasting time. Uh, it, it, this project file, I hadn't exported the... Uh, uh, well, let's... I hadn't exported the animation back to the Blender render engine and, and the keyframes and whatnot, which we did in part one. So if you want to see how to do that, check out part one of the Newton's Cradle tutorial. And I did get some comments on part one saying that the arms here, the, I guess, cables aren't exactly stationary when they move. And so it's not absolutely perfect. You can see it, it kind of comes off here uh, when I'm doing it on the fly. You, know, you make mistakes. I recorded that tutorial, I think, three or four times, and, and it got to a point where it wasn't perfect, but I was like, this is good enough. It'll get them thinking. It'll help the community to improve what I've done, because I'm not arrogant enough to think I'm perfect at this. So, uh, yes, there are a few little problems, and I mentioned on the blog that I've been experimenting with uh, the physics engine and, and improving it, and I might revisit this tutorial in the future, but I figured now let's go ahead and finish out this project, give it some materials, give it some lighting, get it finished, um, and that way we can move on to bigger and better things. So wasted a minute and a half here. Let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is first thing is we need to go ahead and smooth these out. So real easy, right click, hit smooth, select the next one, right click on it, smooth, right click on it. And we'll give them all a smooth shading. There we go. And now what we need to do is set up a backdrop. And I'm just going to do some quick and dirty lighting. Uh, it's not going to be perfect lighting, but it'll get the job done. And if you're working on a professional project and uh, time is of the essence, you want to get things done as quickly as possible. And sometimes, you know, it's still going to get a good result. So I'm going to create the backdrop first. I've got a tutorial on my YouTube channel and on the blog on how to make a backdrop so I'm not gonna waste much time going step by step into it so I'm just gonna create a plane and kind of go through creating this backdrop real quick Let's just set it on the floor like so and go to edit mode and let's go to edge select Oop, nope, extrude that up like so and supply subdivision surface and let's grab all these edges, except for this edge in mean crease. Take that up to one. And then add a couple loop cuts right there and right there. And tab back into object mode, smooth shader, and there you go. The one thing I didn't cover in, let's just increase that some. The one thing I didn't cover in the backdrop tutorial was the material. So let's go ahead and create a new material, call it backdrop and increase the intensity here and let's not make it perfect white because perfect white doesn't exist in real life only in computer systems and let's turn the specularity off because we don't want it to look like it's made of plastic or something and that's pretty much our backdrop I hit zero uh, let's go to front view control zero and zoom out our camera Pick it up. This is all up to you guys to set your camera. Hit 12. However you want your camera to be positioned, do that. If you want to animate your camera, do that. This is not a camera animation tutorial. Okay, so now we're going to take our default uh, blender lamp. We're going to change it to, you know what, I think in the preview I use a sun lamp. But I think I'm going to try, try a few things a little bit different. You know, let's have some fun. Let's experiment. That's what this is about. And take the energy down to 0.5. I just created a hemi lamp. And that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, that's not a good idea. So let's change it from a hemi to an area. And bring the distance back quite a bit. Increase the size down here, about 8. Go to our top view. Rotate that sucker, bring it out here, and see what that looks like. That should give us, yeah, it's dark. We've got some cool shadows going on. They're, the shadows are a little too, a little too harsh. 
and four. There we go. That's smoothing them shadows out a little bit. And maybe put them up to eight. So we want those shadows to be real soft. We don't want harsh shadows. And let it render out here, see what we've got. Yeah, see now we're getting these cool soft shadows. It's not real harsh. They're kind of uh, dispersed, which is which is good. That's what we want because the rest of our lighting, we're going to use some HDR lighting, which is incredibly simple to set up, but it makes makes things go pretty quickly. So let's set that up now by going to our world tab. And actually we need to go back to Blender Render. Let's just check my light to make sure going back didn't screw anything up. All right. So on our world tab, what we need to do is turn on environment lighting because that's where our HDR lighting is going to come from. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to two. And we want to change it from white to sky texture. Now we haven't set up a sky texture yet, but we're just kind of setting the groundwork and getting things ready to go. So sky texture set up. Now we can go to our texture tab and we have world selected here. So we're adding a world texture or a sky texture. And we'll call it sky texture like so. And we'll change it from clouds to image or movie. And here's the fun part. Uh, I've got a folder here for HDR images. What you need to do is you need to go to Google or these four images actually came from Flickr. Uh, go to Flickr.com. You can search for Creative Commons uh, use, stuff you can use commercially. Search HDR or HDRI and it'll bring up a whole bunch of results for HDR images that are free to use under Creative Commons. Um, good stuff. You can also go to Google and find many, many more. If you're doing it for a personal project or something for YouTube, that's fine. Uh, if you're doing it for commercial uses, you want to make sure you have the license for it and you have the permission to use it. So that's why I, I tend to go to Flickr quite a bit. So here we go. I think this is the one I used in the preview, only I modified it. Uh, for the render, I took out the edges here to where I just had the orb. But in this one, let's go ahead and use a really large texture. Let's use, yeah, let's use this Reno suburb deal. Okay, and then all we really need to do in our texture settings is scroll down to mapping, change it from view to ang map, and then under influence, we just need to turn on horizon. So that way we have uh, sort of a, I guess you would call it a sky dome in a way. And if we go back to our world tab, and hold on one second. <clears throat> Had to clear my throat there. Uh, if we go and turn on real sky under our world tab, you'll see we have basically a sky dome is what it did. It's just a quick and dirty sky dome. But okay, now that environment lighting's turned on, sky texture, all of that, we can go ahead and render it. I'm gonna pause this because it might take a little bit with all this other stuff I have running. Let's pause this and I'll hit render and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so render complete. This is what we've got now. You can see we've got some cool environment lighting. We've got these you know, warm colors, cool color. It looks really impressive. It's a little grainy, which we can fix uh, by going down and turning up the samples under our gather tab. And turn up those samples. Uh, the higher you turn those samples, the longer it's going to take to render, but the smoother the final render is going to be. So it's kind of a give or take. So be careful playing with that one. Uh, when you're ready to do your final render, I'll usually turn that up quite a bit uh, just to get the best result possible but do know that you're going to be waiting on on render time so I'm not going to do that here. Uh, next thing we need to do is just add this uh, metal texture so if we hit escape and select one of our orbs go to our materials remember each of our orbs we applied the same material to each of these orbs so what we do to one is going to affect them all. All we really need to do though is let's turn up the hardness uh, somewhere in there for the specularity and then we need to go down and enable mirror that's really most of what there is to it and turn that reflectivity up to in the 0.5 range you'll see there uh, depth up a little bit and we can also turn down the gloss just a little bit because we don't want it to look completely mirrored we want it to Kinda, that might be a little too much. Real touchy on the amount of gloss you put in. So we'll see what that looks like. Let's pause. All right, so there you have it. It took a little bit to render because of the reflections and everything, but now we've got these cool reflecting orbs. 
everything looks pretty cool. You can go ahead and apply the same material to the frame because, uh, or if you want to experiment and do different materials, that's up to you. But since we're making it all kind of the same, we can go ahead. It's all one. Let's actually change this to ball and bump up the reflectivity some and maybe bring down the gloss amount some. Give it just a little for now. And do that. And then you'll have uh, pretty much a finished product uh, compared to what I did for the test render. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the world tab and I'm going to show you what I mean. Now this is really going to increase render times. So I'm going to bump this up. You know what? I'll just double it. I'll bump it up to 10 instead of 5. And I'm going to pause it and go have a coke and a smile <laughs> while this thing renders. And we'll be right back. And there you have it, folks. Nice and rendered out. Looks pretty good. It's still got a little grain in it, but, uh, you know, there's still, uh, I don't know, 5 million more things you could do to improve this result. Maybe add another area light, put it over on the other side, and, uh, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of things you can do. But uh, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. We've uh, done what we set out to do. Thank you for watching, and uh, we've got uh, some pretty exciting things coming. I've, I'm working on a whole bunch of stuff, and it was nice to get this cradle tutorial finished so we can move on and have a lot of fun. So uh, be sure to check out the blog, firechildvideo.blogspot.com for further information. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again very, very soon.